what's going on, America? It's Holy Joe Rock and Roll, your man with a tan who's always got a plan. It's December 30th, 2015. I want to wish you an early Happy New Year. And I want to talk to you about America. Make America great again, right? And the candidacy of hashtag Trump 2016. Now, I don't know if you remember in 2012 when he was thinking about running, you know, he flew with the helicopter and he started saying stuff like, I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised when I make my decision, right? And then in uh, this year, 2015, he started saying the same things. And honestly, I'm thinking, okay, history is going to repeat itself. He's not going to run. I honestly was thinking that way. And then suddenly he announces, right? So ever since that day, and it was kind of a little bit shocking to hear what the pundits were saying about his initial comments. And, but he was right uh, about illegal immigration in the United States, the amount of crime that is attributed to illegal immigrants. Look, we got enough crime from legal immigrants, from citizens, right? We don't need to import more crime from people who shouldn't be here to begin with, right? Now look, Trump has been right on every single issue that I can think of, and I know it has been difficult for some people to hear, but I wanted to say this. I don't know where you are in your support of Donald Trump or other candidates, but what has to be made clear is that Donald Trump has broken the hypnosis of the fourth estate. Now, the fourth estate is just a term, there's a book written about it called the fourth estate, meaning that the media is like the fourth branch of government, right? You have, obviously, the executive, that's the president. You have the legislative branch of government, that's Congress. Congress meaning the two houses, Senate and House of Representatives. And judicial, that's the third branch, that's the judges, the Supreme Court. Uh, those people are the ones who are supposed to make the law and govern the country. But the media has been called the fourth estate because they have so much influence on politics and what's going on. Now, historically, uh, well, I can't talk historically, I'm not that old. But in the recent history, the media has always been leading left. So since the end of World War II, they definitely been, have been left-leaning, socialist, communist, in a lot of their leanings, a lot of their beliefs. And a lot of this has sort of... You know, the communists can't beat us, the socialists can't beat us, so they're just trying to beat us down. And that's what's coming from the liberal media, the press. And all, all along the way, and it is really it is really painful for me to hear these pundits week after week, almost day after day, but definitely week after week, trash-talking Donald Trump. And some of them, you can see the trajectory is slowly changing where they're, they're no longer saying the negative stuff. They're just saying, well, he could win, blah, 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 and stuff like that. But the great thing about Donald Trump is that he has broken the hypnosis that the fourth estate has had over the American people. And there's a lot of things that Americans have wanted to talk about, honestly, have a conversation about immigration, illegal immigration. Let's do something about it. Let's build that wall. Everybody says they want to build the wall, but it hasn't been built. What's going on, man? Since Ronald Reagan, we're supposed to secure the borders. That was back in 1984, 85. So Trump is actually bringing up these issues, and we know, I mean, look, let's say you're a Ron Paul supporter or a Rand Paul supporter. You believe that this country is headed in a trajectory that is unsustainable and it's going to cause a collapse, whether it's a currency collapse, economic collapse, or some kind of collapse. You know that, right? You believe that. Now, you believe that your guy, well, Ron Paul, who's now retired basically, but his son Rand Paul, a senator from Kentucky, you believe that this guy is an agent of change. He would change things, right, in a positive way. But both those guys, the Pauls, are never going to get elected. Let's just be honest. Whether you say they've been cheated, not let into the bait, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're not going to get elected. That's the fourth estate again, huh? keeping them out. But Rand Paul, uh, while he has had a stronger showing than his father in some respects, just compared to Donald Trump, he just he just looks like a weakling. And he has not caught on, really. I mean, he's got three, four percent, maybe five was the max, uh, sort of in the max in the polls that he's had, in nationwide polls. So he's just not going to win. Now, the only change agent out there is Donald Trump, and he can get elected. I mean, the guy's got 40 percent, at least 40 percent of the vote right now, sort of committed to him. And that's out of a field of 17 people, 15 people now, maybe, right? So think about that. If you're fighting against 17 other people, they all got nothing. A couple guys have 10s, 20s, uh, 10s or 12s, whatever. You got 40. And, you know, I don't know, five, six other guys have 1%. The rest is nothing. Come on, think about it. Those people are going to be get, get washed out, if not by Iowa, definitely by Iowa, 
probably half the field will be gone, and then by New Hampshire, probably will be down to the top five people. Let's say the top five finishers. That's what it should be. That's what it should be. You know, right now. But just, I'm just so excited about. I mean, I've always been interested in politics. You know, who said what? What's going on? It's history. You know, you you want to be, you should be involved at least somewhat intellectually. What's going on? Where do candidates stand on the issues? You want to be like that. I know a lot of people in my generation, Generation X, and and whatever, even baby boomers, just kind of tune out. Like, hey, man, I got a good life. I'm fat, dumb, and happy. As long as I get paid, I don't care, right? And that's. You know, maybe the wrong uh, attitude or the other attitude is like, doesn't matter what I do, doesn't matter who I vote for, nothing changes, I can't change anything, so I'm not going to vote. That's the wrong attitude. People are got to get, get energized, I got to get engaged. And a guy like Trump, who is, by all measures, just a brilliant person, now you have to give him brilliance. Think about it. Every industry that he's been in, every project that he's taken on, pretty much he's been successful in. You know, you can say, well, he had four bankruptcies on these casinos, but listen, casino's a casino. I mean, look, he still, he personally and his company still got out on top, right? He was able to restructure debt and stuff like that. But everything he's done, he's done well. And for a guy who's never been in politics, who's been leading in the polls from the very beginning, and, and just every time he says something that's controversial and not supposed to be a self-immolation or he's going to self-implode, he just goes higher in the polls. Why? Because he's tapped into the raw nerve of the American people. We're just tired of these politicians. We're just tired of, you know, think about this. The Republicans have the largest majority in Congress since the Civil War, and yet they just passed a one plus trillion dollar budget without any resistance. Just rolled it, just rolled over. Why? Why are they doing that? They were sent in there to stop. You know, they said they were going to stop funding Planned Parenthood. That's still in there, half a billion dollars. They said they were going to stop uh, Obamacare, change and replace, or uh, whatever. They, they didn't do anything, man. Only one guy, you could arguably say, Ted Cruz, fought the good fight. Of course, he didn't win. He didn't get much support, and that may be towards his, you know, again, his leadership, what kind of leadership skills does he have that he can't rally people together? A guy like Trump is going to rally people together. He's going to put forth a new vision of what it should be, and he's going to get support. He's going to get through. That's just how he does. He builds teams. He builds coalitions. People are going to want to be on his team because he's got a winning team. So I'm rambling a little bit, but I just want to say this campaign has really been exciting. We've got 33 days before Iowa, and... I'm pretty sure Trump is going to be first or second. Uh, it is a caucus type of setup. It's not you don't just go vote. You got to do a caucus thing. It's a whole whatever. I can't explain it to you right now, but it's a whole sort of interactive kind of meeting thing for how people get elected or people get votes. I'm not sure if it's proportional or not, but whatever. Regardless, you know, Iowa is maybe not um, super important. You know, in 2008, it was uh, Huckabee won and he lost. He lost the nomination. In 2012, it was uh, mm, Pennsylvania governor, former Pennsylvania governor, Rick Rick Santorum. He won and he lost. So, you know, maybe Iowa is maybe skewed a little bit, has been historically skewed a little bit towards more towards um, evangelical Christians, let's say, who are voting for their candidate. And that's fine. That's their, it's their right to do that. But it's not, they're not really representative of the country at large. New Hampshire has been more accurate in predicting whoever wins New Hampshire is usually, more, more times than not, gone on to be the president versus Iowa, which is like, I think, five out of eight times, or no, whatever, five out of 12 times versus eight out of 12 times for New Hampshire, something like that, in terms of prediction. Uh, anyhow, that is what's going on. It's pretty exciting. I think this 2016 is going to be an exciting year for the pol for politics. <laughs> and just hold on. Just hold on for the ride. Stay active. Stay engaged. Understand what's going on so that you can make the best decision for you and your family and for the country. I'm holding your rock and roll. I say let's make America great again. America. Our America, right? Let's make America great again. Hashtag. Trump 2016. Peace out.